All right, I'd like to show you how to do um, Japanese short rows on a piece that has two by two ribbing, knit two, purl two, and there's also knit in the round. And so what we're going to need for Japanese short rows are stitch markers. And since I'm going to do four on each side, I'll need eight of these stitch markers. So um, my first short row is positioned four stitches from the side seam here. So that would be one, two, three, four here. And so what I'm going to do first, this is the right side, this is the wrong side. I'm going to turn the work so that the wrong side is facing. And I have here two knits. I'm in between two knits. And so what you do is you put one of these stitch markers onto the working yarn and you slip the first stitch while keeping the stitch marker on the purl side of that rib. That's the most important thing is you always keep the uh, stitch markers on the purl side of the rib you're working with. So then we rib back to the other side so we're now ribbing on the wrong side to four before the side. Knit one. So there we have four stitches left. So we turn again for the first short row on this side. Attach a stitch marker. And now Hold it in the front because that is where our pearls are. So we're going to slip that first stitch, holding the stitch marker in the front, and then rib back to two stitches before the last short row. So now we're coming up on to before. There's the gap from the last short row. Here are two stitches. We're going to turn, put a stitch marker on the working yarn, and this time since the knits are in the front, the stitch marker will be held at the back as we move along to rib to two before the last one on the other side. So this is continued back and forth until you have the number of short rows that you wanted to complete. Here we come to the next one. I went one too far. Oh no, that's perfect. So here, here's one for the pearl. Here's one for the knit on the back side, and so we need one for the purl on this side. So we turn the work, place the stitch marker on, hold it at the back, so I'm holding it with my finger there. Slip one stitch and then rib to the next one. So now we're coming back up on the next short row. So here's a gap, two, here's a gap, two, here's the next gap. Turn, stitch marker on the working yarn, hold it at the front because it's a purl side. And then rib to the next one. So we're coming up on the fourth one on this side. So here we go. It would be, there's a gap, two, gap, two, gap, two stitches, so knit one more, turn, stitch marker on the working yarn, holding it in the front, that's where the purl side is of that rib and then rib back to do the last one so
So let's see, the last one here was on the pearl side, so this would be it. Turn. Stitch marker on the yarn. Hold it in the back and slip the first stitch and rip back. What we have is one, two, three, four stitch markers on this side and four stitches, stitch markers on this side. And you notice that two of them are in the front, two are in the back, according to where the uh, pearl rib is. So this one here, the pearl rib's on the back and it's on the front. So that's how you position your stitch markers for Japanese short rows and 2x2 two two ribbing. Next is how to close, close the gap up that you've made between the two stitches in the rib. We're going to continue working in the round by ribbing up to that first gap. So we purl two here, right two, so knit one here. So we end with a knit one because that's where our first gap is. You can see it's pretty spread apart and the stitch marker is on the back of that last stitch you worked. So that's a good way of knowing where you're supposed to fill in the gap. So for a knit rib what we're going to do is pull this yarn up and onto the left needle and then knit the two next stitches together. So the next stitch with the yarn from the stitch marker. So that's what it looks like on the back. And then for a purl rib we purl up to that gap which in this case is just one stitch and then we slip the first purl stitch put this yarn up on to the left needle, slip the purl stitch back, and then purl through those two loops. So again, for a knit stitch, you knit up to the gap. See, there's the gap. Knit one. Here's the stitch marker showing you that you have to put it on to the left needle. Knit two together. Purl one, slip the next purl stitch, put this on to the left needle, slip that purl stitch back, and then purl two together. So now I rib to the end of my round, and I will continue on this side to get to the other short rows. Now I've left the stitch markers on for now. Just in case I find uh, I did something wrong or something's twisted, then I can go back and find those yarn, the, the working yarn strands, easier than if I were to take them off right now. Alright, so we've knit around the back now, and we're coming to the other short rows from the other side. So I have three or four stitches on the side. Three. So now I see that there's this gap and there's this stitch. What we want to do is fill this gap with the strand of yarn that's on the stitch marker and knitting, uh, purling this stitch and that strand of t t together to make, to close the gap. And so in order to do that we're going to have to slip this first stitch in order to get the strand of yarn up and onto the needle. Then you slip the stitch back and then you go ahead and purl those two together. That's for the purl rib. Then we have a purl one, just normal. And here we come to a knit rib. Same thing. We have to slip that first stitch in order to get the strand of yarn that's now on the back of the work up and onto the needle. Then we're going to slip that knit stitch back, but this time we're going to slip as if to knit 
and then slip the strand through the back and then knit those two through the back loops together. So that way this knit stitch is on perfectly without being twisted. So then knit that last one of that rib. Then we slip the first purl stitch, put the strand of yarn, and now this way it's kind of tight. So however you can get that on there is best. Slip the purl back, then purl. These stitch markers kind of get in the way, but purl those two together. Then purl one of that rib, so that one's finished. Then slip the first knit stitch. Pull the yarn up onto there. Pass the slip stitch back. Then slip as if to knit. Go through the back loop of the yarn that's from the stitch marker and then knit those two through the back loops together. Then knit one. And then you just continue ribbing. So now we can take off those stitch markers and have a look at what it what it looks like. Here you have a short row in this purl rib, short row in this knit rib, purl rib, knit rib. And all the knits are on as they should be, and on the reverse side, the same thing. And then here, this might need some adjusting, but nothing that isn't terrible spread it out a little bit and it just lines into place. So here's a short row on this purl rib, knit rib, purl rib, knit rib. 